Hello everyone, I'm Andre and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make uh, simple mechanical joints. So let's see how they work. So we've got a linear joint right here that's just an object that slides in on one direction. I've got a hinge joint that as you can see it can swing in only one plane. I've got a, a twisting joint like this one that the objects can just rotate around the other object. We have a ball and socket um, joint that actually can swing into planes and rotate. And here we've got two U joints. We've got one here and one here. And I'll explain this later how it works. And here we've actually got a combination of two joints. One is linear joint and the other one is a rotational joint. So let's see how we can implement this. So I've pulled an image of the internet so just so we can see them more clearly. So we start with this one with the linear joint. So we have just have one object that slides in one direction in relation to the other. So let's create this one. So a linear joint. So we'll just use cubes because we can see them more easily. We'll scale them down like that. And then we'll use, we'll just duplicate it and scale this up a bit like that and this one will actually make bigger uh, I'll put 1.4 like this so let's give it the color so you can see it better now so this one will move and this on this axis on the x-axis in relation to the uh, the orange one the white one in relation to the orange one so in order to constrain that we use a physics constraint we'll say linear joint like that and let's connect it so we'll connect it to the cube one and cube two uh, I actually have to name this cube two so it works so it's connected because it's colored now let's pin one in place so we'll say the cube two is not going to move so it won't simulate physics but cube one will simulate physics and in the joint here we have to disable the collision between the two so I think we can try this out already. We'll just rotate a bit and like that. So uh, when I right click, I can poke the object. So if I poke it here, well, of course, because we haven't set the limits, the most important thing. So. The angular limits here will lock everything and will unlock only the movement in the X on the X axis. So now it should work correctly. So if I grab this one, as you can see, I can move it only in this axis. Now, if we just to be more easily to test it more easily, let's just add some friction to it and some limitations. So now it can move indefinitely on the axis. We actually wanted to put it to limited. I will put a limit to, let's say, 50 centimeters. And let's also add a soft constraint. So when it gets to the limit of its movement of the uh, of the movement it will actually bounce back a bit so I had we'll add it here some stiffness like this or it maybe more and some damping so it doesn't 
bounce too much. So let's see. Like that. Now I'm going to poke it with the right click. So as you can see, it goes to the limit and it comes back. So it's talking about friction. Let's add that too. So we want a movement, friction uh, movement. Uh, so we do that with the linear motor here you know, with a velocity target. So in the X axis, let's put this to one. I think that's okay. So if you try again now, as you can see, it stops more easily. Now this is, you can visualize it very easy, but let's just do one fun thing. So we'll actually un block this so we can grab the orange one so you see what happens so the orange one will simulate physics on it so let's do that and we'll grab it so you can see it more clearly now the white one only moves in one axis in relation to the other one so you can easily create with this a piston and a shaft kind of thing so everything that slides you can do with this a drawer for example okay so that's fun okay so I'll put this one aside that's it uh, if you want so with this one we've implemented this one right here the other one you just change the mesh so it's the, the exact same thing now let's try this one. So in order to not redo all of this, I'm just going to duplicate this one that we made. I will say hinge joint like this and I close that one. And here, let's see this. So here we just grab this one and put it here and we'll drag the constraint here like that so what we're trying to do is actually let this swing in only one plane around the other object so the join where it where they join so let's see this so let's lock this everything okay and so we've kind of restarted this so the objects are already connected and here let's put the cube one this one static okay, so we won't simulate physics and this one will so now this one will be swinging let's say it will be swinging around the y-axis so like this so in the x and z plane so for that we we'll just go to the angular limits and we'll say free here. So I think that, yeah, that's that one. So this will be able to swing like that. So let's try it out already. Yeah, so let's disable this because we have no linear movement. Okay. <coughs> So we've got this one, we'll just rotate it 90 degrees like that. So let's try it. So as you can see, it, it's, it behaves exactly like that one. So if we poke it from this side and nothing happens, if I poke it from this side, nothing happens. It just swings in this plane. But if I poke it too much it will go through the other and it just doesn't have a limit to its movement so we'll do that now so we want this to be limited for here to here let's say so for that we'll go into the swing motion here we'll put limited and we'll leave this to 45 that means 45 from the x up and down so it's going to be 90 degrees in total. And here by default, it got the soft constraint. Let's leave it 
like that. So that means when it reaches the limit, it will bounce a bit back. So it doesn't stop dead. So let's try this again. As you can see, if I poke it, it doesn't go further than that. So yeah, that's it. So you would, it's like this, it functions like an arm, uh, like a human arm. So yeah, you can do stuff like that with it. Okay, so we've done this one also. Let's put it aside and go to the other one. Wait, we'll just let's play around with it. If we simulate physics on the first one also, so you see how it behaves. So let's see. Yeah, so it's quite fun. Okay, so let's see this one. This is the twist joint. So basically this object twists around the other object. So for that, we'll take this one and duplicate it. Like that. And let's, let's see here. You know what, we won't do what we did before, we just eliminate this completely. And we'll recreate the physics constraint. We just, the objects are handy to have already because it takes time to make them okay. So now what we want, twist, that means this will rotate around the x-axis, so in the z and y plane, like this, around this one. <coughs> so let's connect them here, cube 1, cube 2, like that, and we'll go and lock everything, and we'll unlock uh, we'll see which one, not this one, this one. So it's the twist motion. So this is very important. <clears throat> A thing that I've learned uh, recently, uh, I would suggest that you position the objects as I've done here, so that the swing motions and the twists have actually uh, so uh, the right logic. So see here when we, because we're this is going to be vertical. So let's let's just add this into the scene. So we got the twist joint here. So now it's horizontal, but we're going to rotate it vertically. Okay. So now if we look here, as you see the disc. Uh, so this object will rotate in the horizontal plane in relation to this object. So it will twist. Okay. So uh, I would advise you to always uh, keep this in mind. And we'll see this afterwards actually when we implement this one. So if you don't have the right position of the object so that the twist is actually twist uh, it's gonna be a, have some buggy movement. <coughs> so here we're, the object is gonna be twisting and we're gonna activate twist here. So we've connected the two and uh, if we leave it to free then it should work already. I'm gonna touch on the positions afterwards when we do this one. Let's just block the cube one. So we'll deactivate. <coughs> so as you can see, it rotates. Exactly like this one. That's twist hinge. If you wanna add some friction to it, go to the physics constraint right here. And you go to the angular motor, you select twist and swing here and because we've selected twist motion here, you check twist here and you look at 
uh, the axis. So the axis of rotation is x. So we'll, th it's this one. And so we'll leave this to zero and <coughs> I think we can leave this to one. So if we do this again, as you can see, it stops fairly quickly. So this simulates friction in the joint. Okay, so we've done this one also. Let's put them aside. Let's try and implement this one. So let's see this again. So as you can see, this one can t can uh, swing in uh, one plane and the other one and can also twist as you can see it rotates now let's try this again <coughs> for this I'm going to create a new one so it's going to be ball and join ball joint uh, ball socket joint okay so I'm going to create a another one, a new one, just because I'll show you why. Uh, so we'll add a cube here, cube one, and we're going to scale, so we'll scale it on the vertical now. So let's put here 1.3, like that. I'll just duplicate this and call that cube two, and just drag it down. It doesn't matter, their location doesn't quite matter within <coughs> the actor itself. Let's just leave a gap here. So let's add a physics constraint. So socket, it doesn't matter the name. Let's put here cube one and cube two. As you can see they're colored, it works right now. We'll put its position right here because that's the center where we want it to rotate around and let's lock everything for now now uh, we'll put cube 2 this one that is actually hanging put to simulate physics the other one won't and here for the collision I'll disable collision like that okay so you know what actually let's leave this to free so we'll just so where is it ball and socket this one okay so now if we look we if it kind of works right it looks like it works at least but you will see that when it spins it's actually weird this one is not spinning uh, the thing is that I'm gonna explain what happens this one is actually limited so it can go further than certain degree because this if I poke it it will go through so this kind of is already a ball and socket but as we'll see here, so we have this here, so you can understand. So it can swing like that and swing the, the other way. Also, it can rotate. But as you can see here, the socket prevents it to go further than rotate, uh, swing further than a certain uh, angle. So here, what we're gonna do is close that one. We're actually gonna say, so yeah, this is the moment where I actually had problems and I didn't know why it didn't work. So if we look at the objects, we want it to swing like that and swing like that. And we also want it to twist like that. So let's do that. So we want it to swing around the Y axis. Let's lock it again. So this is not, this is the twist is not good, so it's twist for us. So you see, there's always already a problem because here it says swing, but 
we're actually gonna treat it as a twist so that's gonna raise some problems so we can't use this one right so let's put this free so this will be one swing motion but because it's limited I want it to limit vertically like that put it to limited this one actually doesn't matter that it's to the right it will actually swing around its um, beginning position and we can offset that here but we're just gonna leave it like this <coughs> so we have one swing here so we need the other swing like that so for that we'll use this one so as you can see it swings like that well it just points that way but it will swing like that okay so if we try it now so as you can see it swing exactly like it should right but it doesn't twist so what we need to do is actually have this free so if we free this one it should also uh, sorry about that should also rotate rotate like that well we're gonna have a problem let's see as you can see it bugs and that's because it does some weird stuff when it reaches 300 degrees of rotation so as you can, I'm not doing anything to it as you can see I'm, I'm manipulating this one but as you can see it's really buggy and that is because of what I said before because of the relative position of the two we have um, we have the swing motion that we're using as twist so it's not good so what we'll do so we'll leave this no we actually lock everything let's lock everything and put uh let's yes we'll unlock the twist so this twist that is actually as swing here is gonna have to be horizontal so what i did before is actually change the position of the objects themselves themselves i let i let the physics constraint like this and i put the objects horizontal so that means the twist would have been correct that way but let's just try it differently and see how, if it works right now i haven't tried this but you know let's try it now so we'll actually rotate the physics constraint itself right so we'll put it like that so this should be it right because the twist is in the horizontal plane and the swing will be like that and like that right so let's see if it works actually I have no idea if it will work so naturally we'll put this to limited here as you can see so you can see it can it can swing in this uh, cone and rotate like that so let's try it out Uh, I can't tell if it works correctly, but apparently it does. Yeah, I think it does. Now let's add some friction so it stops more quickly. So here in the angular motor, we'll, we'll put twist and swing and I'll check twist and swing here and we'll leave this to one let's say okay <coughs> let's try this again so I think it behaves correctly right yeah this is a bit different because the anchor point is lower but yeah I think it behaves correctly yeah so instead of just moving the objects just make sure that that you move the physics constraint and make sure that the your movement movements are actually in uh, sync how do you say 
Well, the one that is twisting should actually be twisting here. So this one. Okay, so this one that you see here is twisting and should be like this one. Okay, so yeah, I think that's it for this one. Okay, we'll put this aside and we'll see how the U joint works. So it's this one right here. So let's see it again in action. So what happens here is that let's look at the the diagram. So the U joint is this one. What happens here is that no matter the angle, well, almost no matter, uh, well, if you go at angles really like 180 degrees between these, it won't work, but almost doesn't matter which angle these two um, arms are between each other. When one rotates, the other will also rotate. So this is what happens here. So let's grab, so let's say, well, just ignore this one. Imagine that we have this one and this one. Okay. So if I, wait, sorry about that. Uh, if I rotate this one, as you can see, this one will rotate also. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, at what angle it's between the two. This is <coughs> usually used in cars when you want to uh, when you want to transmit the rotation from the axis to the wheel, because the wheel moves up and down, and we need this kind of uh, joint. So actually, in the car, it's I think we have two of these, because when the mechanical stuff happens here with the ring, uh, actually when it transmits the rotation, it becomes a sine wave. But yeah, it's that's more complicated. Usually we have, when this rotates, we have the exact same rotation here because it's not mechanical, it's mathematical. So you don't have to put two like this. So it compensates the angle. Okay, so I just put it here just for fun. So it's, uh, so we can see if it works. And as you can see, it does. So let's make this one, okay. So we can use the ball and socket one. No problem. Let's duplicate it and say U joint like that. Put it here. Now let's go inside and I'll actually remove this one. So take it from the beginning like that. So it's U joint. Okay. So let's connect the two. I'll put it here like that. So I'll put here cube one. Cube two. They are connected and let's just lock everything. Okay. Now, so we have this one right here and this one are actually like this one and this one. Let's put, let's uh, put the color on this one like that. So we know it's, uh, we can name them. So when the green one rotates, the, this one will rotate also. So when this one will rotate, this one will also rotate. But this is, so we're talking here about the swing moments, but we aren't actually supposed to use swing moment, movement because from their perspective, the rotation, the swing rotation between the two will actually remain the same. Because if you, uh, sorry about that. If you look here, when this one rotates in a swing motion, so as you can see here, it's like that and like that. It doesn't, so if we swing it like, uh, sorry, not swing, if we, if we twist it, sorry. So if we twist it like this, 
it will actually twist that one. So it's one to one. So it doesn't twist. It just swings like that and like that. So that's exactly what we have to do here. So we just activate the swing movement between the two. But let's, let's look again at this one and let's try to keep that twist motion as I said. So twist should be like that. So we'll just rotate the physics. Uh, no, not that one. I'll just rotate it like this. 90 degrees. Okay. So now the swing is actually as it's supposed to be when it, uh, sorry, the twist. I'm saying other words. Okay. So, so we'll actually lock this one. So it's not supposed to be able to twist independently from this one. It twists with this one because that's how it transmits the rotation. But we are actually uh, freeing the swing motions, but we're actually limiting them. We'll put this, let's put this to 90. Uh, yeah, I think we can, yeah, I think we can do that. So it's going to be 90 like that. So 180 from here to here and the other way also. Let's see. Uh, why is it? Wait. Yeah, so it should work, but I'm not sure why this, this shows it. Wait. Yeah, okay. So we get this visualization because it, yeah, it's actually, it's kind of a semi-sphere here. That's why you see it like that. Because if you look here, you can see it's one like that. And if you like the other one, it's like that. So the two make kind of a semi-sphere. So that's why you see here like this. Okay, so let's just also add the friction that we had before. So it's for the angular motor. It's we're twisting only twist. No, we're swinging. So we'll just activate the swing here and we'll leave it to one. So let's see this. So it works, but the problem is that we forgot to disable the collision. So when, by the way, when you're adding constraints, so it doesn't rotate more than a certain degree, you could actually leave the collision. <coughs> so let's leave it and see what happens. So you can see here when it when this object touches the other one, it limits it. So it kind it works, but the problem is that it can actually go through it like this. So I would recommend not using this unless you actually have to stay true to a certain shape or something. But if you just want to limit the angle and that's it, then you just disable the collision and limit it with what we've done here, right? But if you want to, let's say this one is carved in here and you want it to swing more, then just use that one. So uh, you enable the collision and you let the objects collide. So let's try again now. So as you can see, it rotates. Okay, but we don't see this movement because this one is actually static. So. Let's change that. Let's, we wanted this to simulate physics, but the problem is that it will fall to the ground and we won't understand what's happening to it. So we'll add a physics constraint here that we'll just call anchor, right? And we'll put this to nothing here. We'll put nothing on the first component name. That means it will anchor itself to the uh, to the actor. Okay. So and the second one we'll put Q1. Right. So this one. And here I'll actually leave it only 
uh, to twist uh, like this in the horizontal plane. So as I said before, twisting as you can see, it's not good. So let's, let's try to do this always. I'll try to do this always for my implementation so I don't get into trouble. So the twist is like this, okay? And then uh, that should be it. Because everything is locked, it's staying in place, but just rotates like that. So the, we, we made it rotate, so they, it rotates with this one. So let's try again now. So as you can see, if I grab this one, it rotates exactly like this one. So it transmits its rotation to this one, no matter the angle between the two. Okay. So we can actually, it's funny. Let's, let's do something fun. So let's put the, uh, let's, let's call this anchor one and let's add a, a second anchor. So second physics cons actually let's duplicate this one. Uh, duplicate like that. So we'll put anchor two. Not sure if this will work. I haven't tried it, but it should. So uh, wait, I think it won't work. So what I wanted actually to have this at a certain angle and have it rotate like that, but I'm not sure if it will work. Hmm. Yes, I know how we can do it. Okay. So I have this here and this one will actually, <coughs> we'll add a third cube here. Let's say like this, let's call this handle. Now this will be a handle for this object, so we're going to grab it. So let's see here, we'll put this here and we'll scale this down for like that. Okay, so this will act as a handle for this object. Well, let's just put it here. I will make it smaller like that. No a bit bigger. Okay, so let's see. So now let's take the anchor, we'll put it here and we'll actually anchor. So this anchor is supposed to link this object to this one and we'll say here, I'll we'll put handle like that and cube two. Now, so the the orange object will only be able to rotate around this object, but the rest it's going to be locked. So when we're going to grab this one, and we'll see what happens if it works. I hope it works. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. So let's rotate. Okay. Rotate. And if we, ah, yeah. Okay. So let's simulate physics on this one. Actually anchor will disable the collision just to be sure. So let's try again now. So now if I grab this one, look what happens. The rotation is actually stays true no matter as you can see no matter the angle in which this is pulled okay oh, can't grab it and damn so yeah so that's exactly what i wanted to show is that it rotates it translates the rotation into the other no matter the angle. So yeah, that's really fun. 
Okay, so last one is this one. This is not an actual mechanical joint that exists. I just made it up. So it made out of one uh, linear joint and and a rotational joint. So let's see how we can make this one. I think we can take this one right here, which is a ball socket. Ball socket, then we'll duplicate it and say linear rotational joint like that. <coughs> So in order to see it better, like we saw there, I will take this and we'll add a child here, a cube uh, that will scale like that. Okay. So let's just scale this down also like that. So this and I'll make this extra like that bigger. So let's put this one with another color so you can see it better. Now, so basically this one, uh, and let's move this here. Okay, so we're done almost exactly like we had it there. So this one will move like that and will also be able to rotate. Let's go ahead and add the physics constraint. I'll just leave it like that. We'll put cube one here. I think it's cube one, right? Cube one. Cube one and the, for this we just need the, the parent. So we'll put cube two. Where is that? We don't need this because this is the remnant for that one from the, the, the what we've implemented before. Okay, so what you see colored here is just this one, but the cube is actually a child, so they will move together. Okay, so this one simu should simulate physics, that's good, and the other one shouldn't. That's good. And this one will actually move it like this, because it will collide with this one. So make sure that... So the child uh, of a mesh will like you have here, the se second mesh, which is a child of this one, uh, will actually collide with the other one because when we put the physics constraint, it's as you can see, it's colored, but that means we will disable the collision just between these two, but not between this one and this one. So just make sure you move it out of the way. If not, well, there isn't much you can do about this. If you want to disable the collision, you have to use a a fake physics constraint that doesn't do anything and link this one to this one so it doesn't collide yeah but usually when you have this you just use one single mesh and you don't have a problem here I'm not just just simpler this way okay so we strayed a bit from what we wanted to do so we wanted to uh, slide like that okay so Again, let's see. So this twisting will be in this plane, the horizontal plane, right? So let's make sure that let's disable the lock everything and leave the twisting. So it's not good because the twisting makes sense in the horizontal plane. So let's rotate this one like that. 90. So now actually, yeah, so that's good. Well, if this like this, well actually let's put it to limited. So let's put it to 45, that's good. Okay, and here, so first we've done the rotation, now we can rotate around this and we also want it to slide. So that means it's in the x-axis as you can see here, so let's put it free in the x-axis. So uh, now let's put it to limited actually. So we'll limit this to let's say 50 centimeters. So it's going to be up and down 50. And let's put a soft constraint so it bounces back like that. Okay, so let's drag this into the scene. 
and we'll just rotate it so it becomes horizontal and move this out of the way okay so the fact that the origin is here doesn't actually matter okay so we've got to disable the collision Go here, collision, disable, and try again. So, as you can see, it can uh, slide and it can also rotate, as you can see. Let's see it rotate. So, that's exactly what we wanted. And I'm sure you can find some st fun stuff to do with this. Um, the only thing I wanted to show you is that here, if we want this to have to start at a certain point, let's say we don't want it to start here, we want it to start here and move around that point. Well, for that, we can go here into the angular limits and we have angular rotation offset, which is weird because the linear offset we don't have any linear offset i don't know why but it's just not there so this you cannot actually not you can't offset it but you can offset the rotation so let's see this so if we the rotation is around the x axis so it's this one so let's rotate it let's say 90 degrees doesn't matter okay so as you can see here it should be like that so we should see it rotate from here to here, like horizontally. Okay, let's see. So that's exactly what it does. As you can see, it's from here to here, like that. And the sliding, of course, remains the same. Yeah. So that's how you use angular rotation offset. Okay, so I think that's it. I hope uh, this has been useful. And um, yeah, I'm gonna do more tutorials on physics based stuff. Uh, I'm uh, planning on working on a car, on a four wheel car with steering and acceleration. I actually started. Um, streaming my development on Twitch. So if you want to uh, to uh, see that, you can go and follow me on Twitch. You have got the link in the video description and uh, you can ask questions there and I'll try to answer them live. Uh, so um, with this said, um, I'm going to see you in either in the live stream or in the next tutorial. Bye bye.